What if identifying as an alcoholic is the key to your sobriety? This entire concept bothered me to no end for a long time. My name is Noah. I am an alcoholic. I do identify as an alcoholic. And for me, it's a big reason why I think I've been able to stay sober a bit over one year this time around, one day at a time. When I was a kid, my parents were in recovery. And for those of you that don't know, recovery just means my parents were specifically adhering to certain suggestions, principles, ideas, and behaviors that lend themselves very well to staying sober and not just not drinking or using, but let's just say being emotionally sober. In other words, doing more than just not ingesting their DOC, their drug of choice. And one of the things that my dad did when I was younger was point out that he thought I was going to be an alcoholic or that I was perhaps already one. This was in high school. I had shown some signs. For example, when I was in eighth grade, I got annihilated and I broke into my middle school that was behind my house. Not once, but twice. And I was eventually arrested for this and had to do community service for this. And uh, nearly expelled permanently from Portland Public Schools. There were just some other tall tale signs that I was someone who was prone to go from zero to 100 very, very quickly. And my dad made a mistake in telling me I was an alcoholic because when you tell a would be, should be, could be alcoholic that he is an alcoholic, one of the things that we are likely to do as um, addictive creatures is rebel against authority and rebel against someone else's idea of us. I didn't like being identified that way. And I was determined to prove to him at that time that I was different, that I wasn't like him. I was not an alcoholic. I bring up this story because I think it illustrates a problem that really, really negatively impacted me throughout my life as I got my ass proverbially handed to me by alcohol. Um, I'm a garden variety drunk, by the way. I'm just someone who, when I drink, I can't be sure quite when I will stop drinking. When I drink, I don't exactly know what's going to happen. Um, and when I drink, I can't stop thinking about drinking. I've got the obsession of the mind, and I certainly have the phenomenon of craving. And I've gotten progressively worse as I've gotten older. And I remember after checking in to rehab for the third time, we're going to go way ahead in my journey. I've told my story a lot and I'll put a video in the description or you can click right here if you want to pause and get a beat on my entire story. So click right here if you'd like that or I'll put an end screen at the end of this video. But I remember sitting in rehab with one of my therapists and I'm someone who's very likely to buddy up with therapists. I want to avoid, I want to mask, I want to do anything but be entirely vulnerable and honest. This is something I'm still working very hard on to this day. And I sat down with this therapist, his name was Billy, and he was one of those, he was one of those guys who you couldn't BS with. And he asked me a question that was very, very uncomfortable to be asked. He said, who are you? That's it. Who are you? Once I did my whole pleasantry, um, bubbly, I'm all good, everything's fine act and tried to get close to him, tried to connect with him, tried to be his pal, which he wasn't having. He asked me who I was, and you know what? I couldn't answer that question. I felt immediately choked up. I felt overwhelmed. I felt congested. I felt a rush of emotion. And you know what popped out of my mouth? Um, I don't know who I am. I, I think I'm an alcoholic. It was a moment of honesty. Um, I think I'm an alcoholic. It's a really tough thing to connect yourself with for some of us. And it doesn't have to be, I don't think, because there's tremendous freedom in identifying as an alcoholic. And I won't speak for others, but I will transition this video now to speak for myself and talk about what happened when I finally, truly, truly 
admitted to my innermost self that I was an alcoholic, that I was powerless over alcohol, and that my life had become completely unmanageable. For me, when I stopped fighting that part of my identity, when I stopped trying so hard to prove to I don't know who that I was different or that it was more complex than that, when I just accepted that I was a hopeless drunk who couldn't stop drinking and I needed help, when I just let go, things got better. Things got easier immediately. Now, staying let go has been difficult for me because in my experience, being sober, getting sober, starting that journey is one thing, but staying sober, remaining in that journey, sticking with this path of recovery, of changing my attitudes and my behaviors and turning my will and my life over to the care of something bigger than myself. For example, I'm someone who works a 12 step program to the best of my ability every single day. That takes faith and that takes action and that takes commitment. And for me, that takes identifying as an alcoholic every single day. And you know, when my drinking was bad, but not terrible, it was very easy for me to eventually, once I'd been sober for a while and started feeling better for a time, it was pretty easy for me to go, hmm, you know what? Maybe I wasn't that bad and that's a cliche. Hmm. Maybe my drinking was a product of circumstance. Maybe my drinking had more to do with this influence or this childhood trauma that I've now dealt with in therapy or this period or age or whatever. I, I was able to convince myself through many, many forms of deception that it wasn't that bad, that I was okay, and that I wasn't a real alcoholic. I latched on to anyone on here, on Reddit, online, in person, who would corroborate the story that maybe I was just a problem drinker or maybe it wasn't that bad. And I love that because I love alcohol. <laughs> I love alcohol so much uh, as far as how it makes me feel, how it used to make me feel or how safe I thought I was in my cups. But getting older, and I'm 37, and drinking more, and drinking uglier, and getting more beaten up, for lack of better words, by not just the physical toll of alcoholism, daily drinking, which is what I was doing, but the emotional toll and the spiritual bankruptcy, you'd say, the emptiness in my eyes when I'd look in the mirror, the struggle in my marriage, the financial issues, the self-esteem, absolute destruction or the destruction of my self-esteem, um, the anxiety, the dread, the hopelessness, the acute awareness that I could not control myself, that I didn't know what was going to happen, that I couldn't stop drinking, um, and, and I was afraid I'd never be able to. And so many colorful word, world, <clears throat> and so many colorful words. The worse it got, the scarier it got, the better I became at eventually saying, okay, every day I'm going to identify as an alcoholic, because if I can keep that first, if I can remember that I'm an alcoholic first who needs to do something about the disease of alcohol every day, then I have a chance to be my true authentic self. Then I have a chance to adjust my behavior with that reality in full, full, clear view. If that's first, I'm an alcoholic who wakes up with untreated alcoholism every day. What am I going to do for my disease? This is of course, assuming you're willing to believe the disease model of alcoholism, which I am, because it's working for me today. What am I willing to do today? What am I going to do today to stay, to be in active recovery, to stay? And in the past, once I felt better, I was happy to push that aside. But so far, one day at a time, by identifying as an alcoholic, by taking true, true, clear inventory of what's happened in my life, and what goes on when I stop identifying, when I get proud, when I start saying, that's not all there is to me, which it isn't, of course, but it's the main thing. Today, it's the main thing. 
I keep that first. I adjust my behaviors based on what's been suggested to me by 12-step programs, my sponsor, the literature, my drug and alcohol counselor. I do the things as an alcoholic in recovery, but not a recovered alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic in recovery who does daily recovery work to stay in recovery. I've noticed my life has suddenly gotten a lot easier. That's all I want. That's all I want. If I could have gotten sober, stayed sober, and emotionally sober in that I'm thinking of behaving in new ways, not just removing the substance, I would have. I tried. I tried harm reduction. Uh, I tried self-help books. I tried white knuckling it, which means simply not drinking and assuming everything's going to get better. I've tried. None of it has worked for me. And I understand that spontaneous sobriety can work for others. I understand that recovery is a spectrum, so I'm not dogmatic, but I'm telling you what has worked for me, which is to identify every day as an alcoholic and a grateful one at that, because as long as I never forget that one day at a time, and I adjust my schedule and my rituals and my routines and my behaviors around that based on what's been suggested, then the irony is I'm free to be anything and everything else I've always wanted to be or wondered if I could be. So you surrender and give up in order to win everything. That's actually been my experience. It's been crazy and it's been incredible. And I wish in so many ways, I wish I had just stopped fighting this whole label for so long. I didn't want to be an alcoholic. I just had to be something better or different, whatever that means, whatever I thought that was. And, uh, and it turns out it's perfectly wonderful and peaceful to just, for me, be an alcoholic today who's in recovery, who understands that if I don't stay sober and I don't remain emotionally sober, I will return to my cups. And if I return to my cups, I will shut down spiritually first, emotionally second, and physically next, third. I remember that darkness. I remember checking my hands in the morning when I woke up. I remember having blank stares in the mirror. I remember the dread and the horror and the fear of daily drinking and daily detoxing. I remember how quick I was to lie. I remember how out of control I felt. I remember how lost I was, and I remember how scared I became. It fucking sucked. It was the absolute worst. And um, and if the price of admission to peace and serenity and a whole new way of living and just calm and being okay is admitting I'm an alcoholic every day, first and foremost to myself, uh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm way in. I've lost the energy to fight it. It's perfectly okay. And, uh, and that's been my story this time around. So I hope something I said meant something to someone here watching. I hope you felt something that made you want to come back and spend more time with me. I also hope you know that I am not even remotely pretending that this is the only way to do it or that it's the best way to do it. This is just what's working for me today, one day at a time. So please, in the comments below, let me know what you are going through right now. What are some things you're doing to stay sober? What's been working? What hasn't been working? Or anything else on your mind? I'd really, really appreciate it. And if you liked this video or you got something out of this video, please consider sharing or hitting that like button. I used to feel icky about asking, but I really think it would help promote these videos and give them life and breath, which is what I want. And so I'm going to ask for that. If you're willing to leave a comment or leave uh, a rating or share it, it would mean so much to me. It's currency on this YouTube platform and um, and I'd really appreciate it. If any of you are interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, there's usually about 10% of you left at the end of these videos and I suppose you're the ones I'm most interested in telling. Um, I do have a paid service. It's the first link in the description. It's a scheduling thing where we can video call one another. It helps support me greatly and I really appreciate being able to chat with you guys and offer my experience, strength, and hope to whatever degree. 
but know that it's certainly not a demand. That would be weird. Um, but here's another video that I think you guys would enjoy on the topic of recovery and alcoholism. And here's a playlist right here that I think you guys would enjoy about all of this too. And thank you so much for spending some time with me and for letting me share. My name is Noah. I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic. Of course, there's so much more to me than just being an alcoholic, but when that's first, I get everything else in return. That's the trade. Thank you so much. Take care and I appreciate you.